Hello? Hello? Hi, Alex. Hi. Hi, Hi, Abbas. Hi, Adam. Hi, Muhammad. Okay. Okay, guys, I'm going to start directly. If you have any question, write it in the chats. And uh, at the end of the live session, I'm going to answer all, all of your questions, okay? Let's start. Uh, we said that our lesson this week is about narrative descriptive essays, okay? First of all, I'm just going to make a quick revision. I explained all of these in the video, but I'm going to make a quick revision uh, that the descriptive writing is when you describe a person, a place, a thing, uh, an experience that you have found. Hi, uh, Reem. Okay. Mr. Jad. Jad? Yes. Yes, Jad Habib. Okay. So anything that you have to describe in a descriptive writing. Okay. And we also said that a narrative essay is a story. So when you narrate, you are telling a story. Okay. So this is the difference between them. Narration means telling a story and description is to describe something or a certain place or a certain person or a certain uh, experience, okay? Now, I told you during the video that there are some elements uh, for the descriptive writing. Same as the narrative, you know, in the narrative writing, we have uh, some elements, story elements, which are the title, the characters, the setting, the problem, the conflict, events, uh, resolution, lesson learned, and so on. Also in descriptive essays, there are some elements that we have to follow, we have to use in order to have a good essay, okay? First of all, we are going to start with the sensory detail. You all know that when I say sensory, it means something related to my senses. And you know that we all have five senses, which are the sight, the hearing, the touch, the smell, and the taste. So usually, you use your senses in order to describe. I mean that when I use my sight, I'm describing what I'm seeing. When I use my ears, I'm describing what I heard. When I use my touch, I'm describing how something feels. When I'm using my smell, I'm describing how something smells. When I'm using the taste, I'm describing how a certain thing or a certain meal tastes. So I'm using my senses. I'm using them in order to describe something to the reader. So you have to use your five senses in order to describe. You cannot describe anything without using your senses. Now we move to the figurative language. We have talked about this before. We said that there are lots of kinds of figurative language, but for now, we have just explained three. By next week, I'm going to explain three more also. Why do we use figurative language? Usually, I use figurative language in order to describe something or to compare between two things or to give a certain thing uh, a human trait or a human action. Okay? Why do I do that? I do that because... I have to make it more clear for the readers. I have to make my essay more interesting, more beautiful, more catchy, more attractive. That's why I use figurative language. 
okay? We have talked about three kinds of figurative language, which are the simile, the metaphor, and the personification. You're not supposed, of course, to use all of them. You might use two, one, all of them. It would be great. But you have to try to use figures of speech in your descriptive essay. Is everything clear till now? Any question? Okay. So, chats, let me check. Thank you, Colum. Okay, Adam, great. I'm so glad, Adam, that you attended the, uh, the meeting. Okay. So, as we said, again and again, sensory details, I use my five senses. And figurative language, I use figures of speech, which is also very important. Okay? Let's now move to the third element, which is a dominant impression. What do I mean by a dominant impression? I'm going to explain it in my own words because it would be much easier. I mean that when I'm describing something, I have to show the reader the exact same as I see, as I feel, as I taste, as I think, and so on. So, if I'm a good writer, the reader would see what I see, would feel what I feel, would taste what I taste from the way I'm describing. Okay? So, from the way I'm describing things, the writer would really know what do I mean by that. Let me give you an example. Let's say if I'm talking about a very disgusting meal that I ate at a certain restaurant. The way I'm describing this meal shows that it is disgusting, it's not tasty, I, and whatever. So the reader would really imagine sometimes from the way you describe, would imagine the shape and the taste of this meal without even seeing it but from the way you are describing it. so that's why we say we have to be very dominant we have to give the writers um, a very dominant impression about the things that we are describing okay number four is precise language what do i mean by precise language i have to be specific i don't have to be general I have to use specific words, specific, specific phrases in order to describe something. I don't have to be very general, okay? Careful organization, I mean that my essay should be organized. Any essay in the world should be organized. Now you have many ways to organize your essays. Introduction, body, conclusion based on chronological or time order, based on order of importance, I mean from least important to most important or vice versa, and so on. So the organization is something very important and you all know how to organize your essays, I think, okay? Any questions in now? No. Okay, great. Yes, Adam? No. Okay. Let's now... No. Okay, great. Let's now move to this. Now, if you have a problem in organizing your ideas, you may fill this chart on uh, a draft paper. This one, the ones that I uh, highlighted them, okay? You may fill this chart on a draft paper. What do I smell? What do I taste? What do I see? What do I hear? And what do I feel? What did I touch? Okay, now it's not necessary to use my five senses in a certain essay. Sometimes I use two. Sometimes I use three. Sometimes I use my five senses, but two of them are the most important. So no need to mention the others. Okay. So don't just confuse yourselves and say that I have to use the five senses. No, two, three, one sometimes is enough. Now I'm going to move to something very important, which is the abstract and concrete languages. In a descriptive essay, you have to keep in mind that you are not writing a scientific essay. You are not writing a certain article about the importance of eating 
uh, fruits. You are writing a descriptive essay in which the uh, reader is waiting for something very interesting, something very catchy. So there are two kinds of languages, the abstract and the concrete. What is the difference? The difference is that the abstract language is very clear, is very direct, okay? While the concrete language is very catchy, it's full of vocabulary, it's very creative, okay? So this is the difference. When I say it was a nice day, look at the examples here, please. It was a nice day. This is a very simple sentence a very boring sentence. It is a correct sentence, of course, but it is very boring for a reader who is reading a descriptive essay. Look at the concrete form. The sun was shining and a slight breeze blew across my face. Both of them have the same meaning. Both of them are describing the day. Both of, both of them are trying to tell us that the day was nice, but everyone it's in its own way. The first one was boring, the second was extremely attractive and nice. Look at the second example. I liked writing poems, not essays. I like eating spaghetti, not pizza. These are very silly, simple sentences, okay? Especially for a descriptive essay. When I move to the concrete language, I say, I liked writing short, rhythmic poems and hated rambling on about my thoughts in those four page essays. See the difference? Here, the writer showed us that poems are rhythmic or short and essays are boring and long. That's why he likes writing poems rather than writing essays. Let's now move to abstract. Mr. Smith's was a great teacher. Very correct, no mistakes, completely correct, but boring. There is no nothing, no, no vocabulary words used in this sentence. So, in the concrete language, I said, Mr. Smith really knew how to help us turn our thoughts into good stories and essays. So here I explained more. I described this teacher more. I said that he is helpful. He helps us turn our thoughts into good stories and essays, other than saying that he is just a great teacher. So this is the difference between abstract and concrete. Is everything clear till now? Any questions? No. No, no ma'am. No. No, ma okay, great. Great. Okay. Now we're going to move to the prompt. Let me tell you something. This prompt, which I, I gave you a module about, is the exact same prompt that you are supposed to do the homework on. I didn't even change the prompt. Okay? I'm going to the prompt and continue homework. Okay? Okay, let me tell you something. First of all, some might face things that are hard to fathom or justify. What do I mean by things that are hard to fathom or justify? I mean that, I mean that these things 